it's uh, 6.1 out of our textbook. It is dealing with roots and radical expressions. So hopefully y'all are familiar with this symbol right here, and that symbol is called a radical. Okay, coming from the Latin word for root. I'm sure y'all want to know that. The part underneath it is called the radicand. And then this little N right here, that blue thing, is called the index. Okay, so what we are doing, or what you have done in the past, let's put that, is you've seen something like this. And I really want to point it out because there's an understood index, just like we have an understood exponent of 1 on a variable if we don't have anything there. So hopefully you realize that the understood number here, the understood index, is if it's the square root, square is a 2, so it, that's what the index is if you don't see anything. So you got to know that. So the square root of 9 is 3. But the other kind of problems that we'll be dealing with are numbers like the fourth root of 16. So if we have the fourth root of 16, that answer is 2. Why is it 2? Because 2 used as a factor four times gives us 16. 2 to the fourth is 16. So I put a chart together, um, and I have it already filled in so that uh, the video will go a little bit faster. But I want you to write this down. Put it on the back of your paper on the top of the homework if you have the note sheet. But these are the powers. These are the numbers. And you want to be familiar with these. Okay, 1 raised to any power is 1. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the third is 3. So forth and so on. And one of the reasons I want to do it is you want to recognize these numbers when you see them in problems. You can use your calculator, and if you need to know some help on that, come see me. But more importantly, when you see the number 64, it's on here three times. So you got to understand that the square root of 64 is 8, the cube root of 64 is 4, and the sixth root of 64 is 2. The number 81 is on here twice. Because the square root of 81 is 9, but the fourth root of 81 is 3. And then we have 16. The fourth root of 16 is 2, and of course the square root of 16 is 4. So be familiar with those numbers. Okay, and let's go back and continue our discussion. So now we have the nth root. All right, and the nth root of a number, okay, if you know that a to the n is equal to b, then you know that a is the nth root of 4, okay? Because we knew that 2 to the 4th was 16, then we know the 4th root of 16 is 2. That's all that's saying, okay? Now, things that you need to be aware of. n, be it the power, be it the root, nth root is what we're talking about, n will either be odd or it will be even, okay? So if n is odd, then you will only have one real nth root. Okay? If n is even, then you will have two real nth roots. Okay? And that's, of course, if n is positive. I mean, excuse me, not n, b. It b, the, um, the number you're trying, trying to take the root of. And we'll get into that more in a minute. If b is negative, okay, then we will have no real nth roots. So we have a possibility of either two or none if it's even, and possibility of one if it's odd. And one other thing that I'm going to distinguish um, later, okay, is something referred to as the principal root. That's really bad. The principal nth root is always a positive root. So you got to remember that. And again, I'll talk about it as we go through. And last but not least, don't forget that the nth root, any root of zero, is always zero. Okay? So here's another example here. Um, Underline the correct words to complete the sentence. Since the index of this expression is what kind of a number? It is an even number, okay, because the index is the 4. And the radicand is 81. And 81 is a positive number. Then we know that there are two real fourth roots. So if it's asking you what are the what are the real fourth roots of 81, then your answer would be plus or minus 3. You can look at that chart, you can put it in your calculator. But let's go do some more examples so you'll see the difference in what you have to do. 
for your homework problems. Alright, and I'm going to divide these into two sections because, whoa, that was bad. I didn't want to do that. Sorry. Let's go back. I want that color. Alright. So, fortunately, that straightens the line for me because I am not good at drawing there. Okay, so the first one says, what are the real fifth roots of 0, negative 1, and 32? Okay, what I want to concentrate on is they're asking us for the fifth roots. So up on our little chart, that means we're dealing with an odd number, and you will only always only have one answer. Okay, what is the fifth root of 0? Any root of 0 is 0. Okay, what is the fifth root of negative 1? Negative 1 because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. What are the fifth roots of 32? You would look in your chart under x to the fifth for 32 and go across and you'll find out that that's 2 or know how to use your calculator. But one of the things that's nice about the odd roots is if your beginning radicand is negative, your answer will be negative. If your beginning number or radicand is positive, then your answer will be positive. Okay? But as it says up in the chart, there's only one answer each time. Okay? Now, in contrast, if we go to the next part, these are real square roots, or if I was de dealing with any even number, okay, that first number we have 0 0.01. That is 1 one hundredth, and the square root of 100 is 10, so that would be 1 tenth. But, because it's an even number, we have the possibility of plus or minus. Okay? If I have negative 1, so this is my b being positive, here's my b being negative. There is no square root of negative 1, or you could think to yourself, which is a good opportunity to talk about this, square root of negative 1 is i. But we are asking about only real, so there will be no answer in this chapter dealing with I, because I'm always asking for real roots. So this answer is going to be not a real number. Okay, and the last one says 36 over 121, and that, of course, the square root of 36 is 6, the square root of 121 is 11, and again, we have an even index, so we got to remember to put the plus or minus. Okay, now, that's, <coughs> excuse me, if the question is, what are these roots of those numbers? If you have the radical in your question, you will never do plus or minus, okay? It's either going to be positive or negative, and we'll talk about the difference between those. So we have, um, let's go with, the cube root of negative 27. Okay, as we said here, if it's negative, my answer is going to be negative. And then you think about what's the cube root of 27. And the cube root of 27 is 3. Okay, so we go to the next one. The fourth root of negative 81. I cannot have an even and a negative under here. Can't do that. So this is not a real number. Okay, if it's negative under there, it has to be odd for me to do something. Okay? Looking at um, uh, square root of negative 7 quantity squared, and that's going to be 7. It will always be positive, but if you want to think about negative 7 squared is 49. Square root of 49 is 7. Okay? This one, on the other hand, is asking me for the square root of negative 49. Again, if it's even here, I can't have a negative there and get a real number. So this is, again, not a real number. Okay, so the last thing we got to talk about is when we're doing um, the nth roots of nth powers. In essence, when we have variables in our problems. Okay, so what you want to remember, uh, I'm going to give you the definition, and I'm going to tell you an easier way to remember it, but I want you to have both. So we have um, the nth root of a to the n is equal to a if n is odd. It is equal to the absolute value of a if n is even. Okay, so that could sometimes be a little confusing, so think about it this way. Okay, when you have a radical, and if your index is even, and whatever variable you have under there, it doesn't really matter, and the exponent is even, 
And then when you come out and you get an answer that's odd, then you have to have absolute value signs around it. So what you want to think to yourself with this is you want to think even, remember, even, even, odd. Okay? If they're both even to begin with, and you come out with odd, you got to have an absolute value. So you'll see. Let's do an example. So we have the square root of 81x to the fourth. And before we get into that, I might need to remind y'all, okay, how do we take the square root of x to the fourth? All you need to do is to divide the index into the exponent. So when I look at this problem, the square root of 81, well, of course, you all know the square root of 81 is 9. But if I'm going to do the square root of x to the 4th, that index is 2. And 2 goes into 4 2 times. It's an even number. I don't need to worry about it because I only need to worry about if it comes out odd. So. Okay. So we go to the next one. The next one is the cube root of a to the 12th, b to the 15th. So a, 3 goes into 12 4 times. B, 3 goes into 15 5 times. So I might say, oh, that's an odd. I need to go back and look, but that's odd. And since it's not even, I don't have to worry about it. There's my answer. Okay? And the last one, the fourth root of x to the 12th, y to the 16th. So x, 4 goes into 12 3 times. 4 goes into 16 4 times. So I have an odd. I go back and look. Are both of these numbers even? And they are, so that means I have to have um, absolute values around them. Okay? So on our calendar in Canvas, I gave you some links to IXL that practice all of these. If you have any questions or need help with your calculator, please come see me.